Hello viewers, uh, welcome to Reminiscences from Lantan in Plateau State. We came all the way to meet one of the grand old men of uh, northern Nigeria, Mr. Selcham Maina, in his uh, country home in Lantan. Uh, for those of you who have lived long enough to remember, he was a district officer in the 1960s in various provinces of the north, and then became a very senior police officer in Lagos in the, in the federal service before state's creation in 1968, when Benue Plateau State were created. He became first commissioner of education and then the secretary to the government of the government of General, uh, sorry, Police Commissioner J.D. Gomwak. Uh, so you, and then after 1975, he has been in many private businesses. In addition to what has been his calling, I think, from childhood, which is to serve uh, God as a missionary. So I want to welcome you to the program and to start by saying you started life here in Lantern. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Well, the, uh, here in Lantang, I started teaching. I went to school here, and then from here to Gindry, and after Gindry, I came back here to teach. Gindry Teachers College. Teachers, uh, uh, Gindry Teachers College, yes. correct. And uh, I taught up to 1957 here in Langtang. I left Langtang in 1958 to Joss. To Joss, uh, I started teaching at uh, uh, St. Paul's uh, Secondary School. And from there, I left for Casino Training College. That was in 1958, August, I think, August 68. I taught there for a while, about two years plus, then came back to Joss again. Is it usual for somebody in, that, in those times to move from Joss to Casino? Not, not at all. Well, what happened? Oh, Why did oh, you boy. make that move? You go from here to Jaws uh, uh, to on uh, a pickup if you're lucky, or you go into commercial vehicle, mm. and uh, the same thing if you are to go from Casina to Zaria to Funtua, right through to uh, yeah. you know to. I'm asking about the career move. You are teaching in, in St. Paul's in Jos. Yeah. Why did you move to Casina, which is a fairly strange environment for you? Well, the uh, the attraction is work, working for government. There is a difference mm. in pay, mm. and you would pre prefer to get a better pay than uh, than the one you receive from the missionaries. Mm. So that destruction. So St. Paul was a missionary school. Yeah, it was or missionary. This was a government, yeah, government second school. Government, you know, yes. Government college in Casino. Yes. Yeah. How was he teaching in Casino? How for, for you coming from the plateau to Casino? Uh, not days? at all. I fit. I fit in very very well indeed. Mm. I moved in and I met some of uh, you know the teachers who, who I, I I knew in secondary schools mm. uh, in uh, teacher training mm. and. Uh, we mix up very, very well. Uh, no problem. Mm. I fit in in casino well, well, well accepted. Mm. So I like my teaching in casino. Right. Yeah. So from casino, you move back to Jos again. Yeah, again there was an, another attraction. Jos mm. uh, invited me and made me the staff officer mm. and b bigger pay. Mm. And, uh, the facilities were far better, mm. so I was attracted. This is just native authority. Yeah. Just not native authority, correct. Mm. Yeah. So 
And in chose the same year, more or less, uh, an administrative officer called uh, Kirk, Kirk, Green, Kirk, Kirk Green. Kirk Green. Kirk Green. Kirk Green. The famous uh, writer. Correct. That's right. Mm. Somehow, he he was, uh, you know, he was quite friendly with the principal of uh, Casino Training College. Mm. And the principal was mourning that they left, uh, you know, that uh, he, he let his uh, 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 mathematics uh, teacher, you know, went to, to Joss. And he was quite unhappy about it. Mm. So he mentioned that to Kirk Green. And Kirk Green picked it up and followed me right down to Joss and offered me to go for an ADO training. <laughs> so I accepted that in 1960. Mm. And that was how I became, I got trained at the uh, Institute of Administration in Zaria mm. and got appointed as an ADO. Mm. So and your uh, first uh, posting was to Sokoto as ADO? Uh, the first one was Van Dicke, actually. Van Dicke. We went on tax collection, mm -hmm. drive, drive, you know. Yes. But then, actually, real, my real posting, because the, the other one was an emergency assignment. assignment. Mm -hmm. But then my real posting was uh, Sokoto. How was it to work in Sokoto? It is the center of the caliphate mm -hmm. with some of the well-known names that we got to know in Nigerian politics. How was it? How was it for you? In fact, before I went to Sokoto, I went to uh, Mr. Smith, uh, J John Smith. Mm. He was the director, and he made the postings. So I said, how come <laughs> you send me to Sokoto? He said, go there, and you'll never regret it. Mm. I went to Sokoto, I never regretted it. Very Simple. dry place, very different, different from, your, uh, from the environment you're coming Completely from. different. Mm. It's hotter than here mm. or anywhere in the plateau. Mm. And uh, uh, completely different, mm. you know, from, uh, from uh, what, what, I, what, what I was used to. Mm. But don't forget, I was briefly in Casina and mm. it's the same belt. Mm. So it wasn't, uh, you know, too different uh, mm. from Casina. How was it working with the Sultan and all those? Wonderful man. Was Wonderful. it Abu Bakr then? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wonderful man. Mm. Somehow he came to love me so much. Mm. You want to accept it. I mean, uh, you'd find it difficult to believe. Mm. Sultan dragged me into his bedroom. Sultan Abu Bakr. Sultan Abu Bakr. Mm. The two of us were sitting there chatting, and each time I come, and he he confessed to uh, you know to uh, to people that he likes this person, mm. and uh, the uh, Sarkin Kudu, the son, you know, they, mm -hmm. well, uh, he was later on the Sultan. Oh, also the Sultan. That's right. Yes. He said to me, "How come?" My father, a young man then, yeah, of course, yeah, age, we, we were just uh, you know mm. ab about the same age. Yes. He said, "How come? My father loves you so much that he took you into uh, his bedroom." Mm. He said, "I dare, I dare not go <laughs> into his bedroom." Yeah. I said, "Well, there you are." We well, were a big man, A G O then. Was yeah. Uh, well, yes. uh, uh, I was duo then in Sokoto. Duo. Mm. Yeah. And uh, but well, like well, mm. like you know, somehow. I don't know. We hear a lot about his sense of humor, how he relates to fantastic, people. Fantastic, mm. fantastic. Yeah. He relates very, very much with people. And uh, before I came to Sokoto, I was mm. in Birni Yes. There too, I was well liked. Mm. Uh, in fact, uh, a story was told, you know, you know well, uh, uh, this is true story. Mm. Sultan, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Sadona was uh, finding it, ha it hard to deal with some of the emirs. Mm. So he decided to show one or two examples mm. <laughs> with, with them. Mm. By the time, by the time he was Sadona, by, by the 1960s, mm? 
Was he Sedola by then? He, no, he, was, he, was, was he, 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 he was the premier. Yes. Because he was a Sedona and then ap appointed the premier. Yes. Some of the emirs expect, you know, uh, expect him to be still. Sedona. Sedona. Below the hierarchy. Yeah. And he wants to prove to them that he's now not only Sedona, but mm -hmm. it is the emir, the premier of northern Nigeria. Yes. And... Uh, Believe me, an incident happened in, in, uh, in Nkebi. Mm. And how I explained the whole incident in council, mm. express, um, I impressed the Sultan and the uh, Premier so much. Mm. He refused to uh, stay a night in uh, Gwandu that, uh, you know, th 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 that day. Mm. He stayed a night in uh, Argungu. Mm. And when I went to visit him, he was sitting with his ministers. Guess what? He pulled his own riga mm. and put it on me. <laughs> because you <laughs> had to resolve the incidents? Well, what, what, what happened really? Yeah, well... Mm. Uh, <laughs> Is this something you want to share? It's, it's something uh, I like to keep... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. To put a cap on. Mm. He was so pleased. Mm the way I handled the issue. Mm. And he put, put on his rigor and put it on me. Mm. Since then, every minister mm. in government yes. uh, will say, if I'm there, I'll, I'm first. Mm. <laughs> because once you are accepted by Sadhana, who else? Mm, exactly. So really... It's uh, like an anointing. It's an anointing, mm. more or less. You know. Now, so many I, people will probably not... Recollect that you are also a senior police officer. Yeah, but it, that was later on. Yes. That was later on. Okay. After I finished After you finish the deal. Sokoto, mm. then I went down to, yes. to, uh, to, to Lagos for that. Did you, did, you, did you like being a policeman? Well, um, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, there was this, uh, you know, uh, scheme to draft some officers, mm. administrative officers, into the police, into the administrative, uh, the, uh, in the army. Mm. So we first applied to go into the army, mm. but Nigerian army would not give way. Mm. So uh, they finally settled for police. Mm. So we accepted it, mm. yeah. Myself and Suleiman, uh, Adamu Suleiman. Mm. You remember? Yes. Adamu Suleiman. And J.D. Gomwok also? And J.D. Gomwok also. Mm. That's right. Yeah. So, it's a, it's a short career. You didn't really stay long in the police. Come again. I say, you didn't stay long. I wonder is because... Did I you? didn't stay long because... Um, I wasn't really interested in the police. Uh, you know. It's just to help them settle... Uh, the agenda. Mm. Otherwise, I would have preferred the military. Mm. But then, uh, since we've moved, we were down in Lagos when, uh, you know, this discussion was going on, mm. we went on between the military and uh, the Sadona and the lot. Mm. And when they said, no way, no way, they decided not to tamper with it. Mm then they could uh, do it with the, do the deal with the police. Mm. So they drafted us in, uh, into the police. police so you were in Lagos when the coup of 1966 took place? Correct. So what, how, how was the atmosphere there? How was... How, what, what, was the, how, how, what was your reaction to, to, to the whole situation? Wait a minute, there were so many coups in that year. Yes, the, the first one, January 1966. No, the, uh, the first one I was in Sokoto. Mm. Is the second one that I was in, in Lagos. In Lagos yeah. The counter coup. The counter coup. Mm. So, so if you are talking about the counter coup, yes, we were already, you know, uh, in Lagos. In, in Lagos. Mm. Yeah. And it was out of the counter coup that the one came in, and states were created, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Correct. Correct. Yes. Correct. And you move back to Plateau as, as, as commissioner. Yeah. Um, after the training, uh, you know, the formal training in the police, mm. I was posted to post authority. Mm. 
and uh, I did some work there. Mm. But as I said, police was really not my calling. Mm. So I decided uh, to uh, come back home. Mm. And don't forget something I shared with you before we came in, mm. and that is my calling. Mm. I begin to see the Lord saying to me, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing. With that urge, I said, I feel no. So I came back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you accepted when J.D. Gomok invited you into his government? Again, that's the temptation in life, you know. Mm. You go away from it and then, uh, you know, a friend comes with a good idea and said, mm. you know, look, why don't you come along with me? Let's do this. And that's mm. why I accept it. Mm. For me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good position. You are commissioner of education, the yeah. on secretary to the government. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you, what, what, what can you remember as your own uh, role in that government? What, what were you able to do with, with, with the JD Gomok? Well, uh, believe me, the first three years was wonderful. Mm. We set up a fantastic, fantastic program mm. and uh, none of us is thinking to get a cobble from it mm. or development development thinking of how to better the lot of the uh, the common man mm. and that was all that occupied our mind mm. it was later uh, later on that things start changing mm. and uh, so I pull out so I mean what what really started changing is that the, the, the is that they stay too long, as it was being said? I mean, Gawan and his governors, they stayed nine years. That's quite a, quite a record. Mm. Uh, no, uh, the, Gawan was a very fantastic person. Mm. Uh, but then those with him, I'm not sure whether they were equally committed. Mm. But he was committed, uh, mm. you know, thorough and thorough. And I like uh, like working with uh, mm -hmm. Go on. Yeah. But then, uh, uh, as I said, uh, when things started uh, going the politician way, mm. it's not military way. You know, mm. military has uh, you know a precision of doing things. Mm. But then politics, you have to drag uh, uh, your feet a little bit to please people and so on and so forth. Mm. And uh, I couldn't. Stand some of the things, you know. Mm. So I just said, no. When did you when did you leave government? Uh, seventy five, June seventy five. That is, uh, is it before the end of the Gomok uh, Teno? Correct. I think, I think they were overthrown in uh, his the, the Gowan government. It's uh, a Gowan government that was overthrown. Yes. Yeah, and of course they went with it. They also they went yeah. with it. So at that point, you said goodbye to the yeah, yeah. And I think you went back to train as a missionary. Um, I went back into business. Oh, you went into business? Yeah. Mm. Because the reason, simple. Mm. I built a house in Jaws, mm. my house in Jaws. Mm. And I took a loan mm. from uh, the Bank of the North. Mm. I had... Uh, something like 6,000 to pay. Mm. And it, it was a lot of money in those days. 6,000 euros. 6,000 uh, you know, uh, pounds then. Yeah. Now, uh, well, it was pound in those days. And uh, living job, you know, living, uh, you know, uh, work with government means you have to find money somewhere to pay. Mm. So that forced me to go into business. Mm. And I went into the business. What kind of business? Well, there was quite a lot of uh, petrol filling stations. I was running one or two pe petrol filling stations. I think that was the main one. Mm. And then I graduated from there to other things like electronics mm. and uh, electricity. Mm. So that's, that's how did you Did you find that you have a flair for business that you didn't know about? Yeah, the, uh, there's quite quite a lot, uh, you know, to be done in business. It's a lot of traveling, mm. a lot of things to learn, new grounds, you know, new things completely. And uh, thank God uh, uh, we managed to 
uh, get through. Mm. Uh, it's a big lesson, mm. but uh, I got through very well. Yeah. But mm. actually the impression is, is that you became a very successful businessman. You are on the board of well, NESCO. Uh, they, were, you know. they will. They will always say so. <laughs> that uh, I appreciate I, being on uh, <laughs> on boards and yeah, things. Several and, uh, boards. Uh, Swan, Nigeria I would, Limited. I would, I would say it wasn't bad. Mm. Could be better. Mm. It wasn't bad. So the impression is that you didn't really make the kind of money people think. Uh, I I don't know what what they told you I made. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, uh, you know, we were very, very, very reasonable. I mean, very, very careful, mm. and uh, we we made reasonable money. Well, mm. thank God. Yes. Thank God. I mean, I mean, you are one of the few civil servants, really, who moved from the civil service and then became a fairly successful businessman. Well, we thank God for that. Mm -hmm. you know? I, I I don't think I can grumble over that, you know, yes. because really, we were. Lucky. Mm. It's, it's all luck. Mm. It's not because of any particular. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't, or... I don't think I was. I mm. was uh, cleverer or wiser than any other person. Mm. No, I think it's just luck. Yes. Mm. Tell us about your face as uh, somebody who sees his purpose in life as to to teach the word of God, because at some point you went and you went to the U.S to a missionary school, studied, and then came back and started uh, preaching. Mm. Well, uh, that has its uh, foundation from childhood. Mm. The, I was born just across here. Mm. That's my father's house. Yeah. And when I was eight years old, I had a, I had a, a, you know, uh, a vision. Mm. Very close to that mango tree. Right. The Lord, I saw the Lord. Mm. He was standing great, white, with garments all over, you know, joy all over the place. And he was giving umbrellas to Christian people, flying to heaven. Mm. So being a son of an evangelist, I was so, so sure of myself mm. that I'll get one. Then he turned, he was walking away. And I said to myself, no way. So I ran after him mm. saying, let me hold your Holy Bible. Let me hold your Holy Bible. And then I woke up. Believe me that I'm a Christian today is because of that dream. Because it never left me. Yeah. In whatever I, uh, you know, I do, uh, you know, I I lay my hand to do. Mm. If I'm going wrong, that bell will ring. Mm. Let me hold your holy Bible. <laughs> In everything. If I am quarrelling with you. If I say something wrong to you, that bell will ring. Mm. So it. Became a, cor a corrective, uh, you know, a, a corrective uh, instrument in me, mm. built up in me, mm. and in a voice. Yeah. So I decided after all that uh, the Lord has been able to uh, that uh, the Lord uh, did for me in business. I said, now is the time to say thank you to the Lord. Mm. So I went into I went into California, mm. and uh, I enrolled in the Graduate School of uh, uh, Theology mm. in uh, in uh, what's the place? There in California, mm. Pasadena. Pasadena. Thank you very much. And uh, I got graduated. And the moment I went in that school, that bell ringing, let me hold your Holy Bible, stop ringing. That shows me that I was going the right direction. Mm -hmm. And I was very pleased with that. So when I came back, in fact, I came 
uh, with an arrangement with uh, you know the school, I came with a graduate program mm. to train people, move people from degree level to masters mm. and to PhD level mm. here in Josh. That was in 1988. Mm. And uh, since then, I stayed on that. Mm. And I like what I was saying. Yeah. Mm. Because we take a break at this point. Um, and uh, as you heard, we've reached a point in the life of uh, uh, Mr. Salcha Maina where he actually left not only government, but the business he was doing to go to a theological institute in California where he trained in order to now begin, I believe, a second career, a second aspect of his life, which is that of a preacher and a man who wants to spread both education and religion in society. When we return, we'll explore that in, uh, in, uh, in addition to his other roles as community leader. Thank you and see you soon. The Nigerian story. Welcome back to our session of reminiscences with Chief Salcham Maina here in uh, Lantani in Plateau State. As you heard, uh, after a long career in both government and uh, business, he chose to leave it all behind and become a missionary, going to a theological school in the U.S. to train. Uh, and I think he has been in that uh, space for the last 30, 40 years now. Correct. Tell us a bit about, so after coming back, after training to be to be a missionary, uh, what have you done with that training after coming back to, mm -hmm. to, to Jos? Yeah, as I mentioned, the, uh, we started, uh, you know, this uh, graduate school, it's a summer school. Mm -hmm. Uh, the arrangement was uh, Fuller will fly in, the, uh, you know, the uh, teachers into this country. I'll take them from the airport. Who is Fuller? Well, Fuller Seminary, okay. I beg your pardon. Right. <laughs> Fuller Seminary in California. California, okay. We arranged with them. Right. They will fly in the students, I mean, uh, fly in the teachers. Right. I'll take the teachers from the airport. Uh, house them. Uh, they will teach for whatever months. Yes. Uh, I'll look after their feeding. Right. Their transportation in the country. Right. And then take them back to the airport. Right. Because so, they have their, their that's right. ticket. So that that was the arrangement. Right. And it fitted in very very well with Fulham, mm. because there are quite a, no, a lot of uh, graduates, uh, I mean, uh, graduate teachers right. that want to uh, be exposed, they want right. to know Africa. Right, okay. So we arranged that, right. and we taught, uh, you know, uh, quite a lot of people. Yes. Uh, so are they all teaching theology, or are they teaching other no, subjects? Just uh, theology. Theology, okay. yes. Uh, and... Um, is the idea is to move them from uh, you know degree holders to ma uh, to masters and PhD right. in uh, in theology. We did that for about five years. That was the contract, mm -hmm. and after that, uh, you know, the uh, uh, missionary uh, diocese of uh, the Anglican missionary offered me, you know, to. Uh, uh, to head, uh, you know, the uh, Christian College right. in Jos, mm. and uh, I did that for almost ten years. You, you were the head of the school. Yeah, I was head head of the school, mm. teaching there in the school. Yes. Head of the uh, the teach. It's also a theological college. Yes. And uh, from there, I finally retired mm. from priesthood, mm. and. Uh, Coming down home, 
Nothing doing. In Lantern here? Uh, uh, well, no, I mean, uh, no, no, not, no, 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 uh, I mean, coming down here home in Langtang now. Mm. Yes. I was doing that in Jaws. Yes. So now back here in Langtang, the, uh, my first assignment was uh, to help to establish the Anglican Diocese mm. of Langtang. Right. Again, we did that for about, uh, I was there for about six years. Right. We established the diocese. Right. And uh, the day I hand over, or I handed over the key to the diocese of Langtown. Right. I came back here, that was 83, December 83. Right. Relax. Mm. And I said to myself, I have done it. Mm. Guess what? That night, I don't think it was exactly that night. I think that week, mm. the Lord said to me, now focus on lantern diocese. So I said, what? I thought I've finished my work. Yeah, you've handed over. Yeah, I've handed over. Mm. Now the, the Lord then said, focus on lantern diocese. That is, he is not saying this diocese, diocese in, in, uh, in, a, in a sense, represent the five local governments. The whole community. The whole community, yeah. not the church. So I said, ah, what is it again, Lord, you want me to do? I was, that was, uh, I was 83, uh, uh, almost 83 years of, of age. I said, ah, again? Now, it took me a year to decipher what the Lord was saying. Then I discovered that the Lord was saying, now carry the Bible you promised to carry. Mm. <laughs> you see? Mm. Because I promise. Mm. Let me carry your Holy Bible. Okay. He said, now is the time to carry that Holy Bible. Mm. What does it mean? It means now establish the school. So that's why I spent the rest of my, my, my years establishing this school. We call it Christ College of Theology and Education. Mm. Is it up and running in the school? Is it up and running or you are still up and running. in the process of it's up, it's up and running. Mm. Yeah, thank God. Yes. It's up and running. Yes. And along with it, we have uh, Send, uh, you know, saved by divine bells. Mm. You remember I told you yes. the bells were ringing in my, yes. my, uh, my, my uh, each time I do something wrong, yes. the bells will ring to remind me. Mm. So I created, you know, this saved by divine bells. I am saved by divine bells mm. because without those bells ringing, I wouldn't have been what I am today. Mm. And along with it, uh, we also have... So this uh, is a missionary group that uh, tries to spread the word of God. Yeah, that's right. Yes. That's right. So, on, and it's, it's up and running now, yeah. Right. The other one, the theological college is there, up right. and running also. Right. In fact, uh, you know, we took over from a school. Mm. There was a second school running. So we took, took it over. Mm. And then we multiply, you know, we increase, the, we buy more land. Mm. And then uh, we created, uh, you know, these facilities. So these are up and running. Mm. Thank be to God. Yes. Yeah. Do you think that this is something you will continue doing for the rest of your life, or oh, have sure. you reach a point oh, now? Sure. Oh, sure. Now oh. that you you can now say, okay, I've done it. No, no, no. no. Mm. There's no, no 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 end to it. Mm. I've, I've I've learned my lesson mm. from the day I said to the I said to uh, to, uh, to the bishop. Take mm. over the key. Mm. I relax. Mm. I thought it's done. No. You continue until you are cool. Mm. So no time. I don't no respond. time limit. So now I'm here running and running and running. Mm. And when I see people like you, oh, wow. you come, I said, come along, let's go together. Yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. run together. Mm. What, a, what a pleasure, mm. you know, to be invited mm to be assigned mm. by the Lord mm. to do this. So you have left your comfortable 
zone. In, you will join. You think that's a comfortable zone. <laughs> this is a, this is a more comfortable zone. Mm, for you. Because believe me, mm. each time I want, I want to, you know, to uh, go to church to do something, something will crop up and I say, ah, ah, ah this back. one first. Mm. Ah, I'm sorry that I have to drag people like you all no, no, the way. No, it's my pleasure. To come yes. down, you know, to my see pleasure. my poor self. My Who am I? Yeah. But, but I also notice you still keep learning, not just in theology, but you went back to business school, you are in Harvard, you are, I believe, in London Polytechnic. You need, you need, you need to know this. You, know, you need to know, know things around you. Hmm. Otherwise, you'll just be a foolish... Uh, <laughs> okay, so, so you're learning in order to run the business. I, I, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I, I did all those to be able to fit in with the... Business society. Mm. I've finished business now, yes. but the knowledge is still here. Yes, and I, I, I thank God for that. Yes. You know? So you are not involved in business anymore. In no, any not, type not, of not, business? Not, not anymore. So what has happened to all your businesses? Well, I have a lot of kids. I have uh, eight kids. Mm. One died. Mm. Seven are alive, mm. and a lot of grandkids. Mm. Yesterday, apparently, eleven of my grandkids. You know. We, we, we had to assume. <laughs> my own. They were my just, they, they wanted to say, to, to, to thank me for what I've done. Okay, they were on Zoom. Oh, yeah. They, they with, with them. They connected with, with yeah. you. Mm. Here in Langta. Okay, they came. Yeah. Mm. And they, they were all, one from America, mm. uh, you know, to, uh, from Germany, and mm. with, with, with thank God. Yeah. Yeah. So you are completely retired from business, only devoted to this theological... Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. What are the wider public affairs? Are you invited either by the Plateau State Government or the Federal Government to now advise? You have been on so many committees. I've seen it from your CVs. Yeah. You have chaired so many boards. Yeah. Do, do they still remember to call you now? Yeah, to, time to, to rest, man. <laughs> 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 it's time for everything. Mm. Believe me, if I, uh, you know, at 80 and so on, you can do that. Yes. But when you go into the 90s, you are now 90. You feel something di different. Mm. And uh, I hope uh, some politicians will follow my example. Yes. <laughs> so even if you are invited, you wouldn't do it now. No, so if, 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 uh, if I'm invited, that's a different thing. Mm. Because you'll see the magnitude of. Uh, uh, the case uh, calling you to do to uh, mm. to help solve, and depending on that, mm. if it's something that will help the public, mm. why keep your knowledge from uh, from them? Why? Yeah, because to me, you still look very strong for a ninety-year-old. Oh, well, thank and, you. And, and you can you can still contribute. Too. Well, <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. So, what do you think then about the way the country is now? You have, you have been a DO from the 60s, you have been in government at the state level, you have served in so many committees at the federal level. Mm -hmm. what, 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 is your, what is your take on what, what's going on? It's, uh, it's uh, sad the way things are going. Mm -hmm. Not what we thought. Mm -hmm will pan out. Mm. And uh, my advice will be to our young politicians, mm. both young and old. Mm. Let's look back. Mm. We have so much to learn together mm. and to stay together mm. than otherwise. Mm. Any move to divide this country, avoid it. Any move. Mm. Don't divide this country. Try and manage it mm. as our forefathers have done. Mm. There is a lot that we need. We need each other. Mm. That would be my, 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 my word of advice to all. Mistake, we are bound, all of us are bound to mis make mm. mistakes. But then let's say sorry to one another. Mm. Come together and move this country forward. Believe me, there is no solution than to move this one from the world. We all will gain mm. by living together. You never have a chance to pass this kind of advice to the people in government now. Well, sometimes 
one or two drop in like uh, like you've just done mm -hmm. and uh, in conversation i do i do i do say things like this mm -hmm. mm. but are you in touch i noticed when you did your 90th birthday recently come again when you did your 90th birthday right you know a lot of your old colleagues from General Gawan to General Anjuma, so many people attended. And these are people who are still active in, 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 in the affairs of the country. Do you choose just to, to stay away yourself or because no, these are people you no, 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 normally the, belong uh, to? The, uh, the Anjuma was not there. Okay. Uh, General Gawan was not there. They were all very busy people. Okay. And let me tell you one thing. Hmm. My kids took me by surprise mm. to organize, you know, this uh, elaborate uh, uh, reception, mm. you know, for my birthday. Mm. I thought it would just be some small thing and that's it. Mm. So they invited all the big people. Yeah, but because they got hold of my uh, my uh, the, the, the names on, 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 on my computer, on, on my set. Mm. Uh, People you are in touch with. Yeah, yeah, they they know they run. My, mm. <laughs> he's holding my my set right it, now. Yes, yes. And that's how they got uh, you know the names. Mm. You know. So I thank all friends that mm. uh, I visited. Mm. But believe me, for everyone that we discuss, all I'm saying is it's so nice to be together. Mm. In fact, let me tell you. Sokoto is my second home mm. today. Yes. I have more friends in Sokoto than in Langta mm. today. Mm. Tell me, who do I visit in Langta? I don't know them. Mm. I left home in 1957. Mm. <laughs> so do you get to visit Sokoto sometime? Yeah, I, I left Sokoto in 1966. Mm. And I've, I've been there, you know, several times. Mm. And uh, so I have more friends, you know, over there than here, mm. as I said. Believe me now, if you ask people around, mm. who do I visit? Mm. No one. They're all gone, mm. dead. I can't create a print today. Mm. But I have, I have them, you know, elsewhere in this country. Mm. These are small things, mm. but they matter. Yeah. They are all what make, uh, you know, living tick. And they are all what build a country. Let's put all arms down. Mm. Let's apologize to one another. Mm. Let's come together mm. and move forward. So what do you do day to day now? I mean, on the days when you are not in the missionary school, what's, what's your daily routine like? My daily routine. Mm. In the morning, I'll take a cup of tea. Mm. I'll have a bicycle. Mm. I'll ride my bicycle. Mm. At about 10 o'clock, I'm at the school mm. for worship. Mm. They worship there at 10 o'clock. Mm. And after that, I go around the, uh, the school mm. and uh, I retire for the day. Mm. And when the, the, hot, the place is hot, very, very hot, mm. I go under a mango tree. <laughs> <laughs> <Stay there. laughs> and that's it. Mm. And it's, 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 uh, it's becoming a routine. Mm. And I like it. You don't miss... Uh the hustle and bustle of uh, oh, the oh, cities no, and no, stuff. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all right here. Yeah. Yes. Do you have any dietary restrictions? Come again? Do you have dietary, any dietary restrictions? Do you eat anything you want? Oh, I'm okay. Mm. Oh, I, I, I'm in a state of a stataku. Mm. <laughs> if, I tell, if I tell you that. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, I'm in the state of a quite well. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. I thank God for that. Yes. Mm. And how is family life for you? Family is fine. You know, I lost my wife, yes. I, as you know, but I, I, I got uh, a younger person as uh, my wife. Mm -hmm. the, mm. the life is, uh, you know, so easy. Mm. And uh, people make it hard for themselves. Mm. <laughs> mm. So we thank God. Mm. Thank God. Thank mm. you, sir. Yeah. It's a pleasure talking to you.
and our viewers, you have uh, followed us on this uh, interview with uh, Mr. Salcha Miner, who we came all the way to Lantern to speak to, because as I said, he's one of the builders of this nation. Uh, join me to wish him long life and continuous contribution to the affairs of the country. Until we meet again in another edition, thank you and goodbye.